Karen Bryan for MMA Heat. I'm here with Kendall Grove. Look, dude, you're a co-main event. You don't have to face. <laughs> Handsomest face on the poster, no disrespect, but... I mean, it's the truth, it's the truth. Right, right. But you're working a different hairdo this time. Yeah, working a different hairdo. Going with the mohawk look. Right, right. Yeah. So you're looking like you're pretty ready. I'm watching you at your open workout. What's the best strategy against Damien? Um, not play his game. You know what I mean? Uh, he's a declarated jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner. He's a well-rounded MMA fighter, but um, I, can't, I can't really judge him. You know what I mean? I don't know how he's been training. He might be training with the best boxers in the world. So, uh, But that's what I'm focusing on is keeping it standing, using my angles, and um, just fighting him. It's a privilege of mine to be coming in here and fighting a guy like Damien. That's why I, like, I ain't going to get nowhere fighting um, guys that people don't know. Like, I, I'm sick and tired of going out, hey, who are you fighting? Oh, who's that? Oh, who's that? Now, now this time, I was like, oh, who are you fighting? Damien my Oh. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> well, the thing is, I know that while he's here in town, he's been over at Vanderlei's uh, gym, and he's been training with Vanderlei and Shogun for the last couple of days. I mean, I know camp takes a long time and everything, and I'm just going to let you know that he has been hanging out with them for the last couple of days. So. Oh, um, good. It makes for a more exciting fight. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, I have no bad blood th towards him. It's just business, and let's just go out there and put on a good show for the fans. That's why we're here. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't have no jobs. Okay. So obviously, this is part of the Tough 12 finale. How do you feel having been on the program and and knowing you know knowing the ropes and stuff what do you what do you feel for the guys that are going to be fighting on Saturday night I mean how do you you know what would you tell them uh, just f fight your ass off um, um, this business is that's what they look for is guys who are willing to put their heart and soul not edge out a decision um, regardless sometimes your your opponent trains hard and you're going to get that tough fight where you, it's a hard time to finish them and that's what makes for great fights but other than that just fight your ass off put it all on the line and um, you got a big future. All these kids are young. They they got big futures ahead of uh, ahead of them. So. And obviously it panned out for you. But was you know is it is it as difficult as it sounds to live in that house with no books, no this, no that, nothing nothing to do but you know get in trouble with the other guys? I was cool. I can't read, so it didn't matter if I had books or not. You know what I mean? So, okay. um, maybe a Playboy or something, something I can <laughs> <laughs> pictures. Yeah, but no, <laughs> um, but no. Um, I, I love the experience just because uh, I took. I, I still, I ain't cocky, but I, I'm still, I still think I was the most improved. I was watching the seasons, um, just because I took advantage of every situation that I had. Like I had, well, for one, I had great coaches in Tito, Sal Salis, and um, Dean Lister, and um, so. I, I'm a kid from Maui. We don't have that much great talent. Uh, I mean, we have good talent, but not on that level. So when I went on the show, I was just like, shit, I got to be a sponge. I, I, I got to learn as much as I can. I'm not going to drop this opportunity. And I did that. And that's why a lot of people say, hey, would you go back on the show? Any day. Just because the coaches, you know what I mean? I, I can learn from anybody. And um, I was just the luck of the draw. I was on Tito's team and I got great coaching and here I am fighting my 13th fight in the UFC. I can't, I can't complain. Very nice. And you did mention that, you know, it, it is all about big finishes and crowd pleasing finishes. Is that something that really is playing in your head? You know, as you're getting ready to go, this is, is that not only do you have to win, but you have to win in a really exciting fashion? That's how I'm looking at it from now on. I, I, I believe like my Ed Herman, um, what other decision? Evan Tanner, um, Goran Relic. I, I don't believe in decisions. I think fight, fights should be finished in order to win, uh, get a winner. Obviously, there's one-sided ass beatings, but I just think you should just go for the finish. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm going for in this one. Whether win or lose, like I said in interviews, I don't really care anymore. I just want to go out. I'm having fun. Uh, I've accomplished whatever I wanted to accomplish. Now my short-term goal is to become top 10 in the world. And from there, I'll look after I get to that goal, then I'll look for a next goal. Uh, but till then, just give a good show to the fans. Well, our show is MMA Heat, and Heat stands for Heart, Endurance, Aggression, and Technique. Which one of those has been the most important for you? Heart. Uh, I think I built my career on that, and um, everybody knows that. So... Um, Definitely heart. You, you need it to be in this sport, especially to get far in this sport. And um, as you can tell, you see the guys with no heart. You don't see them lasting very long in this sport. So, yeah, I'm one guy with a big heart. Well, congratulations on your success already and good luck Thank to you. you. Thank you. This is Kendall the Spider Grove and you're watching MMA Heat.